Lisa, without further ado, I'll hand over to you and turn my video off and I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Paul. So, as he's already said, my name is Lisa Newport and I currently work as Online Product Manager at Tourism Victoria. I hope you guys can all um, see the presentation um, as I go through it. If you don't or have any issues, please feel free to just quickly say something in the chat and then we can look uh, further into if there's a problem. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So um, within my job as Online Product Manager at Tourism Victoria, I look after the product listings on visitvictoria.com, which for those of you that are unfamiliar with the website is Tourism Victoria's official consumer website. My main aim for tonight's webinar would be, as Paul already mentioned, to explain what a product listing is, what the benefits are of listing, and also some more tips and tricks for different online things as in what you should do with the images, descriptions and that sort of things. So before I start, I just wanted to find out from um, the people that I have in the room if any of you already have a listing on Visit Victoria or not. So if ever, anybody that already has a listing could just type yes in the chat box, then at least I know what my audience is like. So I can see Kim is typing, so I'm guessing she has a listing. Okay, and have we got anything from Penny or Leona? Alrighty, I can see two of you already have a listing, and oh, there you go, Leona has two. So I'll, I'll focus a bit more on a few more benefits of listing as opposed to explaining what listings is. But um, yeah, I'll get started straight away. So um, for those of you that don't know Visit Victoria that well or want to know a bit more. Visit Victoria, as I said, is Tourism Victoria's official consumer website and it features an abundance of products um, from across all of Victoria, so from all the regions in Victoria, which includes um, accommodation listings, attraction listings, tours, events, hire services, rest restaurants and much more. Listing with us, with us are renewed annually, so a listing goes for 12 months. A standard listing um, Goes, comes at a cost of $250 and if you do have accreditation through um, ATAP which is the Australian Tourism Accreditation Program you can get a listing for $100. Also if your business offers any kind of events or if you're a not-for-profit business you can list with us for free. With all the money that we make from uh, the listings we don't actually keep it ourselves so we don't keep it here at Tourism Victoria all the, all the money that we earn from listings goes straight back into regional tourism boards. So every quarter we give um, the regions their, the money that we've earned and they then use it for marketing purposes, obviously to keep on marketing their region and to keep on getting visitors to uh, Gippsland in this case. So as um, some of you know, some of you don't, uh, listings are created and managed by you, the operator. So it's up to you to update your content, your content when it's not relevant and um, obviously create and maintain that listing. A good thing that we've got with listings is we have statistics which can help you monitor the performance of your listings but I will go into that a little bit further down in the presentation and actually explain a bit, go a bit deeper into statistics, what you can do, what you can't do and explain some new features that we have on the statistics that we provide for the listings. Um, and then also what we also have is the Visit Victoria support desk, so that's a support desk run by me and I've, I'm here with my two colleagues Ashley and Sam, so we're here 9 to 5 in case you have any questions that I don't answer tonight or you have any specific questions for your listing, I'm more than happy to take any calls um, or obviously I can help during the presentation too. So moving on to what a listing actually looks like on our website. So obviously most of you already know but I'll quickly run through this anyway. So when you get a listing with us, you put a description in, which is up to about 300 words. And um, within uh, 300 words, they come here. This is how it appears on our website, visitvictoria.com. Then you can upload up to nine images and also up upload a YouTube video in case you have that. You also get a pin on the map and then there'll be contact details that you can put in, including an address, phone number, fax number, um, email and then a link to your personal website. Another great thing that we have uh, included in listings is a book now button. So if you have um, have a booking system so people can book your let's say accommodation, attraction or whatever it may be, if they can book that online and get instant confirmation when they book that, you can add in a booking link. So then again getting more referrals to your personal website from people booking 
from our website. Um, another great feature is obviously the fact that we include social media on the listings, which you can see on this listing, it has Facebook and TripAdvisor, but you can upload um, also links to Twitter, Instagram, and other similar social media. Another thing we have, uh, which you might not be able to read here, but it says price and booking. So um, within there, you, we, you, you can put in some indicative rates of uh, what, your, what your product has. So indicative rates for, let's say, a night stay at your place or, in, or a rate for an entry cost to your attraction, for example. And there's also a more info tab, which then includes facilities, um, whether you have any memberships, disabled access, all that kind of stuff. But again, we can go into this further when you actually go into your listing or go about creating your listing. So what some of you might not know is that a great benefit of listing with us um, at Tourism Victoria, so on visitvictoria.com, is the fact that your listing doesn't only get viewed on our website visitvictoria.com, but your listing also gets um, distributed. So let's say this is you, your tourism operator, let's say to make it easy, uh, you own a bed and breakfast. You would come to us, so you'd come to the SDO, which is Tourism Victoria in this case, the State Tourism Organisation. You would list your product on my.visitvictoria.com. We would then review your listing and making sure it obviously meets all our guidelines. Then once approved, the information that you've put in is contributed to the national database um, which is called ATDW, and it's a long, difficult acronym, but don't have to remember it, but it stands for Australian Tourism Data Warehouse. So from there, your listing gets stored and distributed to um, a whole distribution network. So from there, you start as, as you just your operator, come to us, get stored at ATDW, and then get distribution. Therefore, consumers get to view you in many different places. Now, to make this a bit clearer, I'll give you an example of some of the um, ATDW or Australian Tourism Data Warehouse distributors. So um, they have a distribution network of roughly about 150 other digital channel channels, 50 of which publish Victorian content. So the network is made up out of a variety of digital channels, including um, some well-known commercial travel sites, also sites like Australia.com, PlanBookTravel.com.au, PleaseTakeMeToo.com.au. And as you can see, there's a whole heap of other um, other travel websites in here. What happens is when your uh, listing comes to the national database, it then goes to whatever distributor websites that um, publish, for example, let's say you're an accommodation business, then your content will be published on all websites that take a feed from Victorian content and within the category accommodation. So that's uh, quite an important Again, point, Lisa, isn't it? That uh, once somebody actually does a listing on Visit Victoria, uh, it automatically uh, gets uploaded to the Australian National Data, the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse. That's an automatic process, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So um, it doesn't require you clicking, I want to appear on any of these websites. All that happens is you upload your listing once and then it goes through to all these different dis distribution channels, which saves a lot of work because often people complain about having to upload um, their business listings on a variety of different channels and trying to maintain all these different listings. In this case, you maintain your listing on our website, so on my.visitvictoria.com, and through maintaining it there and making any changes, so let's say you make a change, an image change, or you change your rates or any of those things, automatically that'll feed through to this um, distribution network, so you're not required to ch go change it on all these websites. But to give another clear example is, this is an example of one listing that's gone through the ATW distribution network. So this list listing, as you can see, it's appeared on all these different travel websites and all these different websites. You can see it's the same image, same time, same map, same content. So it's always the same listing that comes back and all this person had to do was upload it once um, on the my.visitvictoria uh, website and then from there it goes through straight away. Um, sorry, Leona, I'm just reading your comment here. What I might do is, um, in case people have questions, to just make sure that I can get through the presentation, I might leave questions just till the end, and then I'm more than happy um, to answer any questions and go back uh, in the PowerPoint so I can uh, get through it, and then I'll go back to that, Leona. So, um, enough about distribution. As Paul said, 
very important thing and very uh, good thing that we offer, the fact that you have that, that extra distribution and the fact that you only have to edit it once. Um, but to give you an idea of the kind of views that our website gets and the distribution network, I've um, summarised a few key stats which uh, you might find interesting. So to give you an idea, visitvictoria.com received um, roughly about 29.1 million page views over the past 12 months from approximately 8.4 million visitors. So as you can see, that's a very high um, number of visitations. So get your listing up with us. There is an audience out there that's definitely viewing um, that's that's definitely viewing the website. So yeah, 29, 29 million, great stat there. To give you an idea of those views, obviously those views come across the entire website, which also um, features campaigns and similar things like that. But the listings in particular, um, last year or the last 12 months, received 9.9 .9 million page views. And out of those page views, um, roughly half or 5.3 million um, came from visitvictoria.com, whereas 4.6 million came from um, the ATW, so the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse distributor websites. So this gives you a clear indication of the fact that it is really a great benefit that you get distributed because 4.6 million, it's not a small number to be talking about when um, your listing gets viewed on all these different websites. What we also notice with, this is in particular for visitvictoria.com, that 52% of the views um, or the, the operators that we get having a look um, at our website, 52% come from desktop devices and 47% come from um, mobile devices. Therefore, it's definitely something to keep in mind when you're um, looking at your own website or when you're looking um, at possibly creating your website if you don't have one yet. It's definitely something to keep in mind to make your website mobile responsive because, you, as you can see, almost half of the consumers that we get to the website are viewing our website from a mobile device, and that includes devices like, obviously, your mobile phones, but also iPads and similar um, devices like that. Um, currently on our website, to give you an idea, we have roughly 5,500 live listings. So um, these listings, this is a combination of whether it be event listings, accommodation listings, attraction listings, and listings across all different categories that we've got. So we, ha we do have a fair bit of content. So it's definitely something good for you guys to know. Yes, there'll, there'll probably be um, competitive people um, or competitive listings on the website, but it also means we have a great array of um, content, so therefore we'll get more. We get a lot of visitors because we offer so much content. So just to get onto a bit more about your listing, how to create a listing, um, what to look for, what's important, what's important in regards to images, um, writing for the web, stats, rates, all that stuff. I'll go a bit further into a few specific aspects that we see here at the support desk. We'll get a lot of questions at the support desk in regards to a few of these key. Um, key facts. So first of all, um, it might seem um, seem a bit weird or a bit dumb to you, but a lot of people we notice don't actually call their business the same the same name every time. So they don't actually. Um, I'll give you an example. For, we will get um, someone that owns a bed and breakfast, and the one time it's called Lisa's Bed and Breakfast. They call it Lisa bed, Lisa's Bed and Breakfast on their Visit Victoria listing. They'll call it Lisa's Cottage Bed and Breakfast on their own website. Then they'll call it Lisa's B and B on Facebook, and then they'll call it Lisa's Cottage on another social media website. This is something really important to keep in mind. Um, what you have to do is make sure your business name is consistent um, across all forms of online communication that you've got. So to make sure um, search engines like Google, for example, correctly index your business, if you have that same name, Google will see your business, like all your different listings that you've got on Facebook, on Twitter, on um, your own website, on your booking system, Google will see that all as one property and index it higher. Um, in their search results, therefore um, you get your SEO, so your search engine optimization, as opposed to if you keep on calling your business a different name or a small variety of your name, so Lisa's Bed and Breakfast, Bed and Breakfast at Lisa's, Lisa's Cottage Bed and Breakfast, it's not indexed at the same as the same business and therefore it doesn't appear as high in search results. So it's definitely something to keep in mind when you're um, when you're working on any kind of online communication, make sure you've got that consistency. And as, as it's mentioned on the PowerPoint, it's, it is really a quick and easy way. It doesn't take much effort to 
be consistent, but it does make your business appear higher in Google search results. So to go a bit further into what we actually expect from a description when it's uploaded onto, um, onto our website and also obviously onto the distributed network, um, we notice that a lot of consumers skim websites. So they look at a website kind of diagonally, quickly look at it, and if nothing jumps out, they'll stop reading. So try to be as clear and concise in all the ideas that you've got and everything that you want to communicate to the consumer. We notice that as, long, as soon as you start writing real long sentences and um, paragraphs with five, ten sentences, people just switch off. It's too much. They want to quickly skim and get the base idea of what you have on offer. So make sure you always have short sentences, one idea per, par per paragraph. Always make sure you keep on mentioning your business name or event name, whatever um, the listing is referring to. Make sure you mention it both in the first sentence, but also when you keep on coming back in um, the description, keep on talking about your business. Don't always keep naming that name of your business because then people, once they're finished reading it, it's, it'll sit, sit top of mind, that name of your business. Also, try to showcase the best attributes um, of your business to give us an idea what we're going to get when we visit your business. Also, try to find a point of difference, so something extra that you offer, whether it be you have a magnificent location or you have, um, excuse me, if you have a magnificent location or let's say you've got a cottage and it's this old beautiful timber or something like that, very important to feature those key things. The reason I need to have a reason why I'm going to go to you and not to another person that runs a bed and breakfast or runs a cottage, so therefore highlight those key points of difference. And also when you um, communicate about how to get to your property or how far your property is located from um, different areas, try to um, communicate everything in a time, as in don't say I'm located 27 kilometres from Echuca, but say you're located 30 minutes from Echuca or whatever replies because it resonates better with consumers. They get a clearer idea of um, the distance when you give them a time frame as opposed to a kilometre frame, if that makes sense. Just an example of someone, you might not be able to read it um, uh, that closely, but this is an example of a perfect description where straight away, welcome to Be Beechworth. 1860 luxury accommodation, straight away business name. Business name mentioned again. Business name keeps on coming back. They've got a couple of paragraph, short concise sen sentences. Here they mention their point of difference. It's timber, it's from the 1860s. So they clearly are concise, concise short. And then here when they talk about um, their distance, a few minutes, um, give them an idea of what else is around, explore the region, but you're clearly concise, you're not giving people, to, people are often not interested in all those minor details as in I've got a hairdryer, I've got a sink, I've got a shower, I've got a bathtub, all those things, if I'm interested in your business I'll look into it further afterwards, but in that first description you've got 300 words, try to sell your business and don't go into um, minor details just yet. Another thing we notice that is very important well, actually, the most important thing I would say for business listings on our website is their images. We notice that images uh, or product listings with poor images, they don't seem to be getting um, as high uh, of views as opposed to someone that's got fantastic images because if you think about it yourself, if you're going to go um, on holiday somewhere, if something looks stunning in a picture, you're more, appear, um, more likely to obviously go there. So a few tips on um, what's important when you... Uh, when you take images or when you're um, uploading images onto your listing. Most important thing um, is that you have great light, great lighting. So um, we'd suggest um, to have natural light, like natural sunlight, um, pick the best part of the day when the sun's right com coming in so you can capture it, um, so you can capture this bright, beautiful place as opposed to if you're taking a picture at night with just um, the lights in the house it's not going to look as appealing and inviting, so try to get natural light, bright, nice lighting. Also, um, very important to try to make sure um, your rooms look bigger. Try to shoot from a corner in the room because this actually makes, um, it shows more space and dimension, um, This, in particular for accommodation businesses, but it would also be the case if you are in a cafe, for example. If you take it from the corner, it looks much bigger and wider um, and makes it also more appealing. 
Another thing um, we notice is it's important to take pictures of what your um, business looks from the ad side because it helps visitors imagine what your business is going to look and feel like. Again, with this, try to take um, images on a nice summery day. I wouldn't suggest taking it um, in the middle of winter um, unless obviously you've got stunning snow or something like that. But apart from that, I would take it um, on a nice, sunny, beautiful day. Um, so again, we can have we can imagine as a consumer what I'm going to get when I arrive at your business. Um, another thing is we notice a lot of people upload images with too much clutter in, in the images, as in they'll upload, let's say, an image of a bedroom and there's stuff on the bed and there's stuff on, um, on the little cabinets and there's clothes lying around and just small things. Try to have as little as possible, just the basic thing, things in the room because it really makes, um, makes the rooms look more spacious, open and just not as cluttered. Um, also, try to highlight um, unique things that you've got. I'm sure all of your business have something unique to offer, something something special, whether it be a stunning location or stunning bathroom or massive living room or something like that. Or if you're um, an attraction listing, um, you've got stunning interior or exterior or pictures of someone um, on one of your attractions. So try to highlight that unique thing that you have on offer. Oh, I've just noticed that we've had someone else log in, um, so welcome if, if people haven't had a full presentation. Um, I'm just talking about images, um, but I'll show you um, an example of what we would uh, class as great images. So this has been taken from an operator listing um, on our website. So you can see here they've taken um, exterior an exterior uh, photo. Great lighting, she gives me an idea of how big the place is. Here you'll see how they've taken it from a corner, or actually in all the pictures you can see how they've taken it from the corner, which makes um, the rooms look much more spacious. Here you can see how they've, there's no clutter in the room, just the basics, just your bed and your linen and your light, and that's all you need. I don't need to know all the other different things or all the little cabinets that are on offer. I'll see all those when I actually get, um, get to your... Uh, business. Um, let's so um, I was talking about a bit about stats earlier, and that'll probably um, answer your question a bit, Michael, um, in regards to statistics. So um, obviously, statistics um, having statistics of, of your uh, listing is a great benefit. So what we actually provide operators with when they um, get a listing with us on visitvictoria.com, we provide them with monthly statistics. So roughly every um, around the 17th of every month, we um, operators can log into their operator portal and download um, new statistics. So that'll show statistics for the last um, 12 months, but also including the last month. These statistics um, obviously help you make an informed decision whether um, your whether your listing um, is getting the views it, it, it should be getting or whether because we also show averages but I'll go a bit further into personal statistics on the next slide but um, these statistics will also give you an indication of when people are looking at your listing when's the best time of the year when people are looking at your listing um, is that, even if your statistics are low you can call us at the support desk and we can find out a reason why your statistics are low sometimes we realize people's statistics are low because they haven't follow the guidelines just mentioned above as in they don't have great images or their description isn't very clear or they've got complex rates or one of those so therefore it's very important to if you get your statistics there's always we can always find some kind of improvement in it so we can always work on um, bettering those stats also another thing for um, operators that I would recommend is getting on Google Analytics. So if you haven't already got this on your website, I'd highly recommend um, you sign up uh, with Google and start um, collecting analytics. So what you can do through them is you can actually track the visitation. This is more, more referring to your personal website. So you can track who's or uh, what countries the visitors are coming from to your uh, website, but also the success of your website and what parts of the websites that are actually um, getting views, what parts aren't. And you'll also be able to track whether you're getting views that have come originally from Google, people have searched something, or whether your um, views are coming from possibly your listing on visitvictoria.com or any of the distributor websites, or you, or you can then track to see 
which marketing tools are working well and which ones aren't. But to go a bit deeper into the statistics that we provide here at Tourism Victoria, I've given you, I've got a bit of a um, screenshot here of, that, of a stats report. That's a bit of an overview of what stats um, we actually provide. So um, for every operator, this is obviously um, is obviously going to look different. But what the statistics report has, it'll show you if you look here, the views that you've had in the last month. Then um, there'll also be stats that show you the views that you've had over the last 12 months. And then these views are split up by views on our website and on our distribution network. Another thing we've um, just recently actually added into, um, that we've added into the stats reports are the click-through rates. So we've started collecting um, uh, the rates that people click on, whether it be your email, your phone or your website on your Visit Victoria listing. So um, these stats, we've started collecting them as of October. So um, when it says, it'll say on your operator uh, stats report that this is from the last 12 months, obviously as it's only been collected as of October, it's the last six months in this case. But it'll give you an idea of are people clicking through? And if not, why aren't they clicking through? Is it because um, you're not selling your business well enough in your description, whether or is it because they're just browsing around? But it just gives you a bit more of an idea. Also, what stats, ha um, what the stats reports give is you here obviously a bit of a graph um, of when you're having the highest views and lowest views. You'll often see, um, let's say you're a business on um, close to a beach in the middle of summer. You're most likely to see a peak or just before summer when people start preparing for their holidays. So obviously take that in mind, um, the time of the year, the type of business you've got. Another great thing that our statistics report show is um, the views that you've had from uh, distributor websites. So they're not just limited to the views that you've had on visitvictoria.com, but also all um, the other distributors that we have. So um, you'll be able to when you look at your personal statistics report, see what views you've had from what um, distributor websites. Um, and I can see Kim's asking what would you consider a good result in terms of monthly views. To be honest, it's really difficult um, to pin uh, a direct number on that in the sense that um, it varies depending on what region you are, what um, product category that you are. Um, but what we do have is um, when you look at your statistics, there's actually um, an average um, and um, an average that you can see, um, which will show the average for your category within um, within your region. But it varies, I would say, roughly um, from latest stats off the top of my head, roughly 1,400 views. But then again, um, within some of the regions, I, I, I can look up exact stats for um, this region, unfortunately, um, I don't actually have them with me, but I'm more than happy to look um, look further into these exact stats and get back to you guys once, um, uh, obviously, tomorrow or next week sometime. But um, when you look at your personal stats report, look at the um, annual average here, and then you'll be able to see what other regions and what um, what your region and your category type has had. Lisa, average. Lisa, if I may, just a quick question while you're on that point. Are they Averages Victoria wide or per region? So um, these averages um, are per uh, per region and per category. So it would be, let's look. I think this was an accommodation business that I took. So therefore, these stats would be the averages. Let's say this business was located in uh, Yarra Valley and Dandenong ranges. Then this average would be an average for accommodation business in the Yarra Valley and Dandenong ranges. Just because we know this. Um, it, it really, really does vary depending on what region you've got. Like we've got, we've included a median and an average because often um, stats can also get um, a bit skewed in the sense that if you've got a massive business and I'm talking about, for example, in Melbourne, let's say the Melbourne Aquarium or the Hillsville Sanctuary or a business like that, which everybody knows are popular all over Victoria, but also all over Australia and also all over the world. Therefore, um, their stats are obviously going to be often a lot higher and therefore the stats can get a bit viewed and that's why we've included the average and also the median to give you guys a bit, a bit of an idea of both. Um, I can see May's got a question. I will come back to your questions um, just at the end of my presentation. So um, 
to finish off with I'll finish off with stats just to give for the people that don't yet have a listing here's a few steps on how you actually go about creating a listing it's actually really easy and all you have to do is go to the my.visitvictoria website you register from there you just put in um, obviously fill in the registration form you'll then get sent out an email from this email we just ask you to verify your account and then straight ahead you can go and create your listing so you can then go to my.visitvictoria.com log in with your username and password so for the people that already have a listing they can go straight to step six go to my.visitvictoria.com log in with your details if you don't have your details handy I can look them up um, from here or you can also um, request to have your password resend, reset if you're not too sure about what your password is. Then for the people that don't have a listing, all you do is create, click the create new listing button. For the people that already have a listing, there it should be a view or update my product listing, um, my product listing page and then from there you can update or create your listing. For the new listings, um, we you'll actually go through a wizard so you'll go through um, depending on what, what category of business you have so that depending on whether you have a tour business or an accommodation business or an attraction business the wizard is going to vary but it'll take you through roughly about let's say 20 um, steps which then I'll ask you what's your address, give me some images um, uh, give me a description, rates, entry cost, all that kind of things. So if you don't have a listing yet, before you get started, try to have ready um, 300 words of a description for your business and also at least one um, image of your business. You can upload up to nine images, but to start off, yeah, you, ha you have to have at least have one image. Um, then what we also offer here um, at Tourism Victoria, as I mentioned earlier, We've, you've always got us at the support desk, so um, for the people that have come into the webinar late, it's um, me at the support desk, so Lisa, but also my colleague Sam and Ashley. So we're here 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, um, so you can always call us or you can send us through an email if you have any problems in regards to listings or any questions in regards to distribution or online booking or how do I increase my um, views online, all that kind of stuff, we can always um, answer that from there. Also, what's um, available is we have a few a few videos that show and that take you through the steps of actually creating a listing. But there's also um, a lot of other videos you can find online which explain um, in detail a bit more what ATW is, so what the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse is, what distribution is of listings, um, and other benefits like that. For people who um, aren't quite online yet or need some help um, for all things dig digital. ATDW actually provides something called the Tourism eKit, which is an online um, eKit which provides tutorials um, relating to whether it be mobile design, SEO, e-marketing, social media, online booking, analy analytics, and a lot more. So the way eKit um, is, it's actually a free service that's provided. All you have to do is go on to um, the tourism uh, to the ATDW website, which I can send you the link if you're interested. Then from there, you register for this free service, and you can then start by looking at all these online tutorials, and these tutorials come in the form of um, either a PDF or you can also watch a YouTube video for most of the tutorials. The um, eKit itself, I think it's off memory and Paul might be able to help me here, but I think it's roughly about 600 pages if you download the full eKit. But the eKit gets updated frequently, so I wouldn't recommend downloading the whole eKit. I would go um, go to the specific uh, tutorials that are interesting for you and whether you want to know more about SEO or whether you want to know, know more about how to get your website design sorted or how to be better on mobile, you can go and obviously t take those uh, tutorials and find out more about online stuff. So I think I've pretty much said, um, said what I was planned out to say. Um, I'll, I'll leave this um, screen open so for anyone um, in the room you can write down these contact details and if you have any specific questions um, in regards to your personal listings um, that you don't want to say through the chat here, I can, um, 
I can get back to you um, on Monday. Otherwise, um, I'll have a look at the questions in the chat box now and quickly um, run over those. That's great, Lisa. Thank you very much for a very uh, informative presentation. And I can see so far that we've got a, uh, a few questions coming in there now, which is uh, which is great. I've got to say, Lisa, I'm loving your English accent as well. I didn't pick that up in calls earlier, but it's uh, it's coming across there loud and clear. So uh, lovely accent. So um, who have we got who's got questions? We could probably go back to Leona's um, firstly. I've uh, been getting requests for payments from uh, one of the properties that was on that side before. And I might just go back to that one so those who came into the room uh, later can see it. But we were on this slide at the time. Um, Leona, can you just explain maybe a little bit more about your question there? Was it, is it actually from one of these companies here coming direct to you asking for a payment of some sort, or is it coming to you via visitvictoria.com? So uh, if you could just clarify that, that might help Lisa and or the team uh, be able to have a look at that for you perhaps uh, tomorrow or something. But I guess it's just uh, where that would actually be coming from, whether it's Tourism Vic or one of these particular uh, companies that's listed on here it would be good to get that information. So yeah. um, hopefully you can provide that for us. Have you got anything to add there, Lisa? Um, yeah, I'm just trying to find out, um, just for Leona's question in particular, I'm just seeing if she's running back. So um, so if I'm understanding right that you've got, um, you got requests to, um, to one of these properties. So when you say requests for payments, as in a, a consumer contacted you and requested for payments, or was it more one of the websites said you had to pay for um, a listing, just so I understand the question um, correctly? All right, so um, if you want to let me know exactly what website it was, because um, these websites, they should never um, ask you directly for payments as such. Um, I do know, especially for the people that are already listed um, on visitvictoria.com, that there has been, um, that there has been, um, there's a scam going around through Vic Tourism, which is in no way related to us at tourismvictoria.com, and they've also requested for um, money for the listings. So if you've ever received any communication through Vic Tourism, that's definitely not us, so disregard that. But um, if any of the distributor website have contacted you for um, any more money or they want a commission, that's definitely um, not something that's come Sounds from ATW a bit dodgy as for such. Sure. Yeah. That's right. That does sound dodgy. So I would, um, Leona, I would say, uh, sorry to interrupt, Lisa, but um, I would say, um, Leona, your best bet would be to maybe just contact um, Lisa or send her an email or forward the email of where that's uh, come from just so she can double check it. But it does sound like something that might be a little bit on the dodgy side. So if you, um, you know, even if it's even if it's a commission, commissions normally normally negotiated before a booking, not after. So it still would be something rather unusual. Um, yeah, and sorry, Lisa, you go. Yeah, to to add to what Paul's saying, um, definitely, as I said, you can add your booking link onto the listing, and any of the distributor websites should never be asking um you any extra money for these bookings or any of those things. But yeah, Leona, if you want to forward me that email, then I can have a look into that. So for now, I'll just disregard it because I'm pretty sure it's just someone um trying to scam money. But yeah, forward it to my email, and then I'll have a look at it um on Monday. So I'll scroll back up to the questions. Where are we at? Just while you're doing that, I'll just post a, um, a link in there. A couple of them have asked for links for the ear kit, so I'll put that in the chat box. So if you want the the, uh, the link direct to the uh, the ear kit, um, there it is. There, uh, Donella, that's the link for the tourism ear kit. Um, so Kim's question in regards to um, the good results in terms of monthly page views, um, as mentioned earlier. I don't know off by heart um, if I can quickly look it up if you can um, bear with me to see what roughly um, the the average is for the region and the category. But as I said, if you've, um, I think May, I thought you already had a listing. So if you've already got a listing, you'll be able to look up those averages. But um, I might just, because um, it might take a while to get those stats actually up, I might just, if you want to just leave your email address, I'll, I'm more than happy to look into that further on Monday and I'll be able to give you um, an exact um, exact stat of average for uh, what your category is and what region you're located in. So on the um, on your login page for each operator that has a listing with Visit, uh, Visit Victoria, is it fairly easy for them 
Lisa, to be able to find the page of where they get into those stats, particularly yeah, this yeah, particular yeah. one here that you were showing earlier. So is that fairly a fairly easy process for every operator to be able to get in and get sort of information? Yeah, so the way they go about it is they go to the My Visit Victoria website, log in um, on the left-hand side. Um, there's a login page, uh, login details, so you put in your username and password, log in, and then from there straight away you'll come to your operator portal and there'll be, from memory, five different boxes. So there'll be one that says um, view or update your product listing or renew your listing if you're um, up for renewal. Then there's also um, one tab that'll show all the invoices for previous um, listing fees, so for previous years. Then, that, then the other tab will give you a direct link actually to the tourism e-kit. So if people are interested, they can also log into their listing and have a direct link there to the e-kit so they can register for, for the e-kit. But also on that main operator portal, there'll be, um, be, there'll be a screen that'll say um, stat operator statistics and then from there they'll be able to download um, exactly this report that Paul just showed here um, in the form of a PDF. And as mentioned, these stats um, roughly around the 17th of every month, if you want to follow um, the stats accurately, 17th of every month, log in and then most likely you'll see another month be added here. So if these say here February, um, if you log in on 17th or 18th of April, you'll also see the stats for March. That's fabulous. Thank you very much for that, Lisa. And uh, Michael, hopefully that's uh, a little bit of feedback for your comment too on how you can compare the views, not with just simply one fellow, uh, fellow colleague, but perhaps uh, several throughout the region just to see where you're actually sitting within the, uh, within the average. So hopefully you'll find that helpful. We'll move down to, um, to May now. And hey, welcome. Um, May, I, I'm, uh, I'm expecting a letter from your mother as to why you were late coming to the webinar. No, not really. <laughs> Um, so you got a couple of questions there. Number one is, what are the most effective promotional sites for small to niche businesses? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about uh, where that's pushed through with the ATDW, but have you got something to add to that one, Lisa? Um, probably similar to what you've just said, that um, for a small to niche business, um, with that, like making our website sound the best, I would say list with our website in the sense that because when you list with our website, as I mentioned earlier, you get that automatic distribution so therefore um, it goes through to um, I'll see if I can go back to the screen this is just a snapshot of some of the distributors I'll, set, I'll add the link in um, to the actual current distributors too and you'll be able to have a look um, if I just get their website up you'll be able to have a look at the exact distributors that ATW has at the moment and then from there um, you can open a plus sign box which will then show what category these distributors um, publish on their website and for what region. So I'll just get that link up now, so bear with me. Alrighty, so May, if you have the link at the bottom there, um, if you go to that website, you'll be able to see the current distributors that ATW has. And when you go to the specific distributors, next to their name, there's a plus sign. And then from there, it'll say um, every category that they publish. And um, if it says that they, category, uh, that they publish, obviously, Australia, that includes Victor the Victorian content. If it just says Victoria, then it'll, it'll um, be our, the content that you publish through my.visitvictoria too. So then, yeah, from there, have a look at, because the thing is to, just um, to avoid confusion, what might happen is um, when you look at your stats report, the stats report actually shows all the views that you've had on dis different distributed website. This, that doesn't mean that you're not listed on other websites on top of that. It just means you might not have, have had a view on that website yet. So what you can also do is when you get a listing with us, just Google your own business and see what kind of website you, you come up on. And then you'll be able to see um, which of these websites are part of the ATW distribution network. To move on, I'm going to have a look if anybody else had any Fabulous. questions. So we've got a question there from Janine, just with regard to the quality of the images that are required. So a little while ago, you were talking about um, the style of the image of what's in them. And I, I'm assuming, Janine, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, this question is more about uh, how the photo should be cropped, uh, the you know dots per inch and things of that nature. So um, Lisa, I think in the help menus and so forth, a lot of that stuff is provided, isn't it? So you've got the 12, 1280 by 720 pixels? Yeah, so um, I'll just copy-paste actually um, some 
image standards into the box so people um, can have this for themselves. And while while so, Lisa's, oh, sorry, you, you go, you've got that. If you have a look here at the image, this is our standard image standards. Um, so the size is 1280 by 720, and we recommend um, operators to not do anything to their original images as such. So um, don't start cropping your images yourself or start making them fit that exact 1280 by 720. Um, send us, we kind of recommend the bigger the better because our system automatically um, resizes images. So when you um, when you list with us, upload the original, and then from there, the system will resize it to fit on different parts of the Visit Victoria website. So it, when I'm referring to different parts, I'm referring to, for example, if you search your business listing on visitvictoria.com, you'll get a little thumbnail of your images, whereas if you click into your listing, they'll be obviously the big hero images. So from there, we resize that all, so you don't have to worry about resizing and making sure it fits into all those guidelines. But as long as you make sure we recommend landscape, um, just because they resize better. Also, obviously, your image is um, 1280 by 720 pixels. Make sure um, you just have one image per photo. Um, sometimes we end up getting people that um, make a collage of all different images. Problem there is because images get um, get sized to fit different distributor websites, it, so stuff can happen that images can get cropped, and therefore that's why we don't like collage photos. But yeah, mainly, um, Good in focus, good lighting, um, the size you've got there, landscape pictures, and um, the bigger the better. That's the main, the main one I've got there. Fabulous, Janine. So I hope I hope that's answered your question, Janine. But uh, if there's anything outstanding on that one, uh, let us know. Uh, Donella would like the links. We've posted that for you, Donella, so that's there already. Uh, and then we get down to uh, Kim with the next question. With the distribution out to other sites, are there any online travel agencies or OTOs uh, that would have commission structures in place? And I guess this is where the um, TXA comes into place, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to answer this, um, with regards to, because um, we obviously are into online booking, like the distributors don't take any um, any money for like don't ask any money for the listing but when you're talking about um, online booking it depends on obviously what booking system you're linked through um, I'm not a hundred percent sure um, on the TXA um, commission structure so if you're linked up to TXA I'm not sure exactly how much commission um, is taken whether it be a percentage or an amount but um, it does actually vary Lisa so um with, with the TXA, if you're actually opted into TXA, and for those who don't know, TXA stands for Tourism Exchange Australia. Uh, a little while ago, we were posting a link for the AT uh, for the um, Tourism E-Kit. There is a dedicated tutorial on TXA if you'd like to get more information on that available in that, uh, that E-Kit. Um, but basically, with the online travel agency that may be connected up with that, each of them would have a different level of commission uh, that they they have. So if you're using TXA, you should have through your normal console um, a list of the distributors on uh, the other side of TXA who are buying through the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse, and each of them may have a different or differing differing uh, commission structure that you would either accept or reject if you wanted to be bookable through their website. And I think on the uh, input side. Um, with TXA, there's a lot of user systems now that are fully compatible with it. For example, Front Desk from V3, uh, SiteMinder and Little Hotelier, uh, the Book Easy system, are uh, all compatible through TXA. So if that's an area that you'd like to look at with your distribution and, and actually having a lot of those online, tra a lot of those third parties, which if I go back to the slide again, was this one here. Uh, if some of these are actually booking sites that do charge a commission, through the TXA, you can be bookable through that particular site, but the commission level does vary. So uh, I'm not sure if that's actually covered uh, what you're asking there, Kim, but um, if you've got a further question on that, please feel free to uh, type it in there. Great, that's good. And if anyone else wants further clarification on uh, TXA, which stands for Tourism Exchange Australia, um, which is simply a, a, a uh, uh, a combination of the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse's database along with the booking functionality that makes all of that content in that database, including yours, bookable if you'd like it to be bookable. 
Okay, so uh, I think we've got to the bottom of the questions so far. So uh, before we um, before we sign out for the day, um, has anyone got any any further questions on anything at all to do with uh, listing on visitvictoria.com or uh, Tourism Exchange Australia or the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse? So May's got a great question there too, and and I guess this is a this is a really good question that May's asking about campaigns. Uh, Tourism Victoria obviously are doing all sorts of campaigns both domestically and internationally all the time and, and of course their call to action is always visit victoria.com or visit melbourne.com if it's to an international audience. So Lisa, are you aware of uh, any particular campaigns that uh, that could be of interest to uh, regional operators throughout Gippsland? Um, I'm trying to have a quick think. I know um, we've currently got our Play Melbourne campaign um, going, which also includes some regional content. Um, let me have a quick look. Um, I know there's a big interstate um, regional campaign coming up, which um, I think Tourism Victoria is still working on, so I can't give too many details on just yet. But um, specifically in regards to campaigns, um, I don't want to give you the wrong content just because Mainly, um, I focus on the online stuff and not so much um, the regional campaigns, but I'm more than happy to have a chat with the regional team um, when I get back in on Monday to see if they've got anything of interest, particularly um, for the Gippsland region. I know often with campaigns, the way it runs is it runs um, in collaboration with obviously the regional team here at Tourism Victoria, but also with um, regional tourism boards, which in this case, um, obviously Destination Gippsland. So they'll also be able to help um, um, spe specifically, if you want to be part of campaigns, um, they'll specifically be able to help in that um, in that instance. So sorry, um, May, that I can't give too much of an elaboration there, just because I'm um, not so f not that familiar with that part of tourism. I'd also Victoria recommend search. that people can uh, actually sign up to the Tourism Victoria newsletter as well. So if you haven't already signed up to the newsletter, um, May, I know that. Uh, uh, Tourism Victoria does send out a, a regular industry newsletter and I'm sure as a part of that newsletter they would have uh, upcoming campaigns and of course anything they're doing in partnership with uh, Destination Gippsland I'd also recommend the uh, Destination Gippsland newsletter which comes out on a regular basis as well uh, would contain that sort of information as well on your behalf if they are um, directly involved so uh, there's a couple of avenues that you can just get their heads up uh, on that, and, uh, and Janine's just said she can follow up with you in regard to Destination Gippsland for more information. So, May, I hope that's helpful, and thank you very much for what was a great question. Now, Danella, um, welcome. Um, I did see you pop in a little bit late. Um, with the costing with visitvictoria.com, we've just brought that back up now. That was one of the earlier slides, and I think it's probably important just to mention, uh, and I'll let Lisa talk about the costing itself in a moment. But uh, it's important to know that, that that all of this money with Tourism Victoria being a not-for-profit not uh, destination actually goes back to the market of the region. So the more people who buy a listing in Gippsland, the bigger the budget with Gippsland to market the destination and hopefully develop business for everybody. So just in terms of how the fee structure works, Lisa, it's back over to you. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, obviously, um, as you missed that, um, Listings with us go for 12 months, so a standard listing, so let's say you're an accommodation business, tour business, attraction business or any of um, or any other listing, it costs $250 to list with us. However, if you have, if you're an accredited business, so if you are accredited through ATAP, which if you're unfamiliar with is the Australian Tourism Accreditation Program, um, then we offer a reduced fee of $100. So the ATAP um, accreditation includes uh, both whether you are accredited through um, ACU, which is Australian Camps Association, or if you're accredited through Museum Australia, uh, Museum Victoria or CRVA, which is a Camping Recreational Vehicle Association, or Ego Tourism. So any of those above um, mentioned accreditation forms, you get a reduced fee of $100. However, if you um, are a not-for-profit business, you get a listing for free. And also, if your business offers any kind of events, then you're more than welcome to upload those uh, those listings for free on our website. So if any of the people that already have a listing would like to upload events, they can just log into their operator portal. And then from there, there should be another tab where you can create a new listing. Where there should be a plus sign. And then from there, if you're having a, a special night or something um, exciting coming up, you can upload those listings for free. And um, that's also unlimited. So it's not like we say you can only upload five or 10 events. You can upload as many events as you got. And as Paul also mentioned, we don't keep any of the fees um, 
that we get from the listings. So every quarter we give the money back to the regions and they are then um, uh, they, they then use that to market your region further. So obviously they would use it in campaigns or whatever they deem fit to um, get more consumers to your region. And right. So yeah, I hope one thing I also forgot to mention, especially in regards to um, list, uh, a lot of people here already have listings, um, with renewals, um, in case you're worried how we communicate with renewals, we send um, operators uh, an email a month before the listings are due to expire, just um, a friendly reminder saying your listings about to expire and the steps on how to renew. We also send that out um, two weeks before it's about to expire. On the day that your listing expires, like these are all automated emails, but then on the day that your listing expires, we send a personal email and we also give you a quick call saying, have you received any of our emails? Because we do realise, first of all, a lot of bit, a lot of people have a business as an like have an accommodation business, for example, as an extra business on top of their normal full time job. But also, a lot of people often you get swamped by emails. You get round to it later, whereas we feel like quick phone call saying, have you received our emails? Do you need any help? So we'll do that on the day your listing expires. And also two weeks after when your listing actually gets removed from the website, you get another email. So there's heaps of reminders in case you're worried about um, missing out on your listing. So Fabulous. I can see Kim's, Kim's got another question. Um, so uh, when you're referring to... I guess everyone can see the question there. Sorry, Lisa, you keep going. We've got a slight delay between you and me, so I apologise if I keep talking over the top. <laughs> That's okay. Um, if you're referring to web deals as such, I'm not sure if you're referring to offers on the website because we we do still on the Visit Victoria website, there's um, a part on the site which um, talks about offers. So if your business has a special offer, let's say, for example, um, a special, whether you're a restaurant and you've got special, uh, a special menu offer coming up or you're an accommodation business and you're doing some kind of reduced rate or a free night or something like that, if you've got any of those specials coming up, you can contact the Regional Tourism Board, so contact Destination Gippsland, and they'll, they'll then provide you with an Excel spreadsheet where you put in the details of your offer, and um, that offer also comes at a cost, unfortunately, so the cost goes, and um, that goes through the Regional Tourism Board. I'm not too sure what Destination Gippsland um, Destination Gippsland actually uh, charges for the offers on the site, but yeah, they it goes through them. You get the offer up with them, and then it gets sent through to our team here, and we'll upload it onto visitvictoria.com. But I'm not sure, Kim, if you're referring to offers as such, or if you mind just clarifying in case I've completely misunderstood your question. Um. If you're referring to Groupon or um, sites like that, um, I'm not sure. Oh. oh, perfect. There you go. I've answered the question. So, yeah, offers go through the Regional Tourism Board. Give Destination Gippsland a call, um, and they'll then be able to provide you with the Excel spreadsheet, fill it in. They'll be able to give you the cost, send it to us, and then um, the offer can go online on the Visit Victoria website. So that can be on top of obviously your normal listing that you have with us on visitvictoria.com. That's great, Alita. Just another question I just thought of, um, just in terms of Visit Victoria uh, listings. Um, when organisations like Destination Gippsland have a very, very active social media campaign where they're promoting the hashtag inspired by Gippsland, uh, particularly on you know Twitter and Facebook and uh, also Instagram these days, um, is there a space in visitvictoria.com listings for um, tourism operators throughout Gippsland to really push that particular uh, hashtag and the associated destination Gippsland branding that comes with it? No, so unfortunately um, what we offer on the product listings is just the social media um, specific to operator listings. So um, as you can see on this slide, um, you can upload um, all your different social media links. So you link to your Facebook, your TripAdvisor, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus. Um, I'm probably missing some more here. here. But yeah, you can up upload um, all your different links to your social media, and then you'll get an icon for every different social media link. But no, we unfortunately don't um, have the capacity in the current um, operator portal to add um, hashtags in. Sure. Thanks very much, Lisa. Um, okay, so um, Burke, I think you've come in a little bit late. Oh, looks like Burke might be uh, typing a question now. By the way, for those who have come in late, the um, the first seminar we did, we did work out how to successfully record it, and this one is being recorded as well. So uh, a little bit further down the track, they will be available on the Destination Gippsland website under the Creating Smart Connections section. So if anyone missed the part of the program, 
and would like to go back over it later on, that will certainly be available as an ongoing resource. So, uh, Eric's got a question there now. Is the Nova listing linked to the listing, or do we need to update separately? No, that's all the one, so, all the one listing, as I understand, Lisa. Yeah, so great question. We get that question a lot, actually. Um, so visit Melbourne, visit Victoria, same thing in the sense that if you update your listing on the my.visit Victoria portal, because often there's confusion to people will call us saying, I can't find anywhere on visitvictoria.com to update my listing. It's because we've got a separate system to, up, a separate system to update your listing. So you go to my.visitvictoria.com, any updates made on there automatically um, also go to Visit Melbourne because it's the same website. It's just um, like it has the same content. It's just um, also focused at a different market as such, more of an international market. But yeah, same thing, update it once. Not only does it go through to Visit Victoria, Visit um, visitmelbourne.com, but also, as mentioned, it feeds through to um, all the distributors that we've got. So obviously updated here and then feeds through to all those websites. So yeah, you definitely don't have to um, update that separately. 